Good morning, friends. Today we're going to talk about a new paper just published in JAMA uh, describing the dramatic rising rates of liver disease and transplants, yes, transplants, from uh, alcohol consumption. This is Longevity Now, Longevity Now FL. Uh, I'm Luigi Fontana, professor and the scientific director of the Charles Perkins Center RPA Clinic uh, of the University of Sydney. As you know, alcohol is becoming deeply embedded in our modern culture. Glamorized on TV, magazines, and at any social event, shifting societal norms have driven increased drinking habits, particularly in young individuals and women facing unhealthy peer pressure and social expectations. For men, alcohol is often linked to masculinity or a way to relieve aggressiveness and stress. For women, for girls, it's uh, marketed as an escape, a way to unwind or cope. Social media, movies and advertising often portray drinking as a normal or even empowering activity for men and women. Yet, Regardless of uh, who you are, the biological impact of drinking alcohol is severe and the consequences are surfacing earlier and more frequently. Behind the celebration lies a harsh reality is alcohol is toxic and it's driving a growing public health crisis. As I said, a recent study published in JAMA highlights how bad the situation is. We are experiencing an unprecedented and alarming surge in alcohol-induced liver disease and related liver transplants between 2005 and 2021, with both and men, men and women affected. Just to give you a few numbers hospitalizations for alcohol-induced liver disease increased by 169, yes, 169% in young men, uh, and even more shocking, 283, almost 300% in young women. What is worse, that liver, liver transplants, because as you know, you know, if you, if these uh, the alcohol driven uh, uh, liver disease is progressing, then uh, people may require liver transplants. Uh, among younger women, liver transplants between 2005 and 2021 skyrocketed by 2,327%. Yes, you're, you have heard correctly, 2,327% higher uh, uh, liver transplants uh, compared to 2005, while young men saw a 681, 680% rise in the last 15 years. This is terrible, terrible. So the question is, why are women more vulnerable to alcohol-related liver damage? Well, there are several reasons and they're all, of course, biological, women tend to have higher blood alcohol concentration than men when consuming the same amount of alcohol. This is due uh, to women's lower pro uh, proportion of body water, meaning alcohol is less diluted in their system, leading to higher levels of ethanol in their bloodstream. Additionally, my friend uh, Christian Frezza has published that women and even some other people, for example, Asians, uh, have a reduced ability to metabolize ethanol in the gut, a process known as first-pass metabolism. This inefficiency allows more alcohol to enter the bloodstream, intensifying the liver's and body exposure to toxic substances, to toxic metabolite of alcohol. On top of that, differences in immune responses such as uh, 
elevated sensitivity of liver cells to toxins and inflammation make women more susceptible to alcohol-induced liver disease. So how does alcohol harm the liver? Why alcohol, drinking alcohol, is damaging the liver? When you drink, your liver works tirelessly to break down alcohol into toxic byproducts like acetaldehyde. These compounds are highly damaging to the body, triggering inflammation, DNA damage, and scarring that can ultimately lead to liver failure. The liver processes alcohol using two key enzymes, alcohol de dehydrogenase, which converts alcohol into acetaldehyde, and the second is aldehyde dehydrogenase, which then converts acetaldehyde into acetate, a less har harmful substance. This process produces an excess of NADH, which disrupts the body's metabolic balance and promotes the formation of triglycerides. These fats accumulate in the liver, resulting in fatty liver disease. Chronic alcohol consumption also triggers the immune system, leading to alcoholic hepatitis, so it's an inflammation of the liver, as interleukins, pro-inflammatory cytokines and neutrophils, attack liver cells. Over time, this damage can overwhelm the liver's remarkable ability to regenerate, leading to permanent harm, especially when visceral obesity and metabolic dysfunction as the fatty liver disease are present. And as you know, we are living in a society where uh, abdominal obesity and metabolic syndrome are highly prevalent and therefore they interact with alcohol to cause more damage to the liver and not only to the liver. Moreover, animal studies suggest that a high-fat diet potentiates the damaging effects of alcohol. Eventually, then, the liver becomes scarred and cirrhosis develops a condition that is irreversible and can lead to death or uh, 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 um, cancer cirrhosis. The challenge is that liver damage often goes unnoticed, so there are no symptoms until it's too late. Alcohol misuse doesn't just damage the liver. That's the problem. It's not just a problem for the liver. It poses a serious threat to nearly every single part of your body, increasing the risk of heart disease, in particular atri atrial fibrillation, stroke, is damaging the brain, impacting memory and cognition, pancreatitis, bowel cancer, mouth cancer, breast cancer, among many other cancers, are basically driven by alcohol. The truth is that no level of alcohol consumption is safe for your health. Yes, no level of alcohol consumption is safe for your health. And it's not me who is saying that. The risks are well documented and the World Health Organization, the expert of the World Health Organization, recently reinforced this concept in the Lancet, in a, in, in the Lancet pub, in a publication in the Lancet Public Health, stating that there is no safe, no safe amount of alcohol when it comes to health. It's not the drink itself, it's the alcohol, the Ethanol is a toxic psychoactive substance that has been classified as a group 1, yes, group 1 carcinogen by the International Agency for Research on Cancer, a category that includes asbestos and tobacco. So basically alcohol is as bad as asbestos and tobacco in inducing cancer. Alcohol is linked to at least seven types of cancer, as, as we said, the most commonly being bowel, so colon cancer and breast cancer. And as I have briefly explained, is the way alcohol breaks down in the body that increases cancer risk, which means 
any alcoholic beverage regardless of its price or quality so doesn't matter how expensive or you know how good quality it is can contribute to the development of cancer bottom line the more you drink the greater the risk in fact recent data show that nearly half of alcohol related cancers in europe are linked to light or moderate drinking this includes less than 1.5 liters of wine or 3.5 liters of beer or 450 milliliters of spirits uh, uh, per week okay most alcohol attributable deaths in the european union are due to cancer particularly breast cancer in women and uh, remember anything that increases cancer risk due to the accumulation of DNA damage also accelerates whole body aging this is why people who regularly drink often look much older than those who don't as they get older of course the toll alcohol takes on our cells not only raises the risk of cancer but also speed up, speeds up the aging process leaving visible signs on the skin and body as we said and as the world health organization claims the risk begin begins with, with the first drink the risks as I said, with alcohol consumption begin with the first drink the first drop of alcohol to identify a safe level of alcohol scientific evidence would need to show that a specific threshold exists where alcohol no longer poses a risk however the WH or the World Health Organization has made it clear that no such threshold exists unfortunately in fact the potential benefits of light drinking such as reduce risk of heart disease let me repeat it, the potential because it's just a potential epidemiological data uh, uh, benefits of light drinking on uh, heart attacks uh, coronary heart disease do not outweigh the cancer risks associated with alcohol consumption again there is no safe level of alcohol consumption the more you drink the more harm it does the less you drink the safer you are the best is not to drink at all so just to summarize this is a public health crisis these numbers you know this pandemic in young individuals of uh, alcoholic related liver disease and liver transplants is a health crisis that demands immediate action and greater awareness despite the overwhelming evidence linking alcohol to cancer many people unfortunately still don't fully understand the risks involved it is it, it is time to change that Here, here's how we can make a difference altogether first of all recognize the risks even light or moderate drinking daily drinking can have serious long-term consequences engage in conversations with friends and family to challenge societal norms and reshape how we view alcohol in our lives and then explore healthier alternatives to cope with stress emotional struggle and addiction yes because most not everybody but many people they drink especially when they are stressed they have emotional issues and uh, they are addicted you know to certain substances and so uh, as we have discussed in other videos exercise mindfulness and spiritual and philosophical practices offer powerful natural options to get wasted advocate for change lobby for cancer related health warnings on alcohol labels 
just like those on tobacco products, to inform consumers of the dangers that may not be aware of. Empower healthcare professionals to have open, honest uh, conversations with their potential, with their patients about the risk of alcohol, and, and finally support a global movement to raise awareness and take action to address this growing health crisis. Let me finish with a, a positive note: the increasing availability of high-quality alcohol-free, zero-alcohol beers and wines provides healthier, healthier alternatives for those who want to enjoy social drinking without the harmful effects of ethanol. However, the real potential lies in advancing research to develop innovative products that preserve the health benefits and sensory qualities of the phytochemicals found in grapes, barley and hops while eliminating the toxic effects of alcohol. This approach is crucial not only for improving, improving public health, but also for fostering sustainable agricultural practices, creating new businesses, models, and uh, driving economic growth and that prioritizes wellness and avoids the damaging consequences of alcohol consumption that extend well beyond uh, cancer, liver disease, uh, cardiovascular disease, atrial fibrillation, dementia, and uh, of course, you know, the risk of having an accident or, you know, having fights and uh, the, 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 say the social consequences of uh, drinking. To summarize, the alcohol-related pandemic of liver disease and cancer is a crisis that ca can no longer be ignored. Protect your health, protect your life, your well-being is worth more than another round. Together we can change these alarming statistics, share these messages, start the conversation and help rewrite uh, the story about alcohol consumption. Subscribe for more health insights. Let's raise awareness, not the glass. Thank you, uh, thank you as always for, for listening. This is Longevity Now, Longevity Now FL. I'm Luigi Fontana, Professor of Medicine, the Scientific Director of the Charles Perkins Center RPA Clinic and the, the Health for Life program at the University of Sydney and a clinical academic, a doctor and a clinical academic uh, in the Department of Endocrinology of the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital uh, in Sydney, Australia.